Hey guys, do you question whether you're going to ruin your leather by trying to clean it? Maybe you'll try to clean your inexpensive leathers, but when it comes to luxury, you just don't know what to do. Well today, we're going to confidently clean, condition, and re-dye these luxury loafers, as well as speak about a few differences between cheaper leather versus luxury leather. So let's get to it. Okay guys, so the first and probably most important step that we want to do is use our trusted cleaner to completely remove any surface dirt and debris before doing anything. This is important because for at least these two main reasons. The first is that removing dust, dirt, and debris provides a longer life for leather because those substances dry out the leather and can lead to cracking. Secondly, if there is surface debris on the top and we add any type of cream or polish, that dirt would be mixed into the leather, potentially causing damage like scratching. So for those reasons, cleaning is a fundamental step. I want you guys to know that I trust Shoe MGK Cleaner and Conditioner even for my luxury leather because it is specifically formulated for most materials, but especially leather. It doesn't have any harsh chemicals and it's made with natural coconut and jojoba oils. Of course, you guys should always test an area before you use for color fastness, but I've never had an issue. And at the end of the day, feel free to use whatever you're comfortable with and whatever you prefer. If you guys find yourself unable to brush hard to reach areas, I found that using a clean soft toothbrush works really well on leather. You guys can also simply use a q-tip or microfiber cloth. Once all the debris has been lifted with those suds, you're gonna wanna go ahead and wipe off all that dirt and debris, leaving behind a hydrated, smooth, and clean leather finish. Just note that the discoloration that we saw before is still there and that the liquid darkened the leather for a time, so we'll still need to re-dye those portions as needed. So once everything has been completely wiped off and dried, we're going to move straight into our next product. You could potentially use leather dye as well, but today we'll be using a pigmented cream that will gently hydrate and dye back the leather to its original color. The one I'll be using today is by a brand called Tarago, and they supply Carnuba and Beeswax Cream, which adds a specific color pigment, hydrates the leather, and adds a protective barrier. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like on. I personally don't like wearing gloves when I'm working because it makes my hands clammy so I literally just snipped off one of the fingers on the glove so that I don't dye my finger when applying the cream. If you guys happen to accidentally get any of this pigmented cream on something, just wipe it off before it dries and you should be just fine.
I wanted you guys to know just a couple of differences between low quality leather and high quality leather. I'm not talking about fake leather versus real leather, but the range of differences even between the quality of genuine leathers. Although I could create an entire series on the nuances of leather quality, here's a few tips for identifying those differences. First of all, low quality leather is often made from leatherboard, which is also called fiber or reconstituted leather. It is in fact real leather, but it is essentially all the scraps of the leather ground up and glued together. I personally wouldn't call it leather, but brands get away with it all the time. This leather usually doesn't last more than a couple of years at most. When it comes to high quality leather, you're going to expect a quality chosen hide without any blemishes, a quality tanning process, as well as a supple feel and long life. Where cheap leather often feels stiff or even brittle. Ironically, cheap leather can look and feel a little too good, especially if you can see a repeatable pattern, which probably would indicate that the texture was stamped or embossed onto the leather. Lastly, cheap leather often is going to be thin and lightweight, while better leathers are thicker and heavier in quality. Take for example when I'm searching for some high quality leather shoes to restore for the channel. I look for very similar criteria such as, is it well constructed? Is it heavy or light? Is the brand reputable for providing good leather? Even if I don't know the brand, this can often lead me to purchasing some really great leather products that have years of life left in them. So while that advice is very limited, I do hope that it gives you guys a good idea before picking up your new leather pieces. Why don't you guys let me know in the comments below what you think are some of the biggest differences between high versus low quality leather. Once that pigmented cream has completely dried, go ahead and buff it out with either a horsehair shoe shining brush or a lint-free cotton cloth to produce that beautiful shine. If you guys were wondering how to properly use a shoe shining brush, I would advise barely using any pressure at all. The goal here is to just barely touch the surface of the leather with the bristles of the brush, yet to do so thoroughly and evenly. After that, you want to move in a back and forth motion vigorously, like so. This method of brushing has produced some of the highest shines for me personally because it disperses the waxes and oils evenly and enables the leather to look its best. One of the very last yet most crucial steps to finishing these luxury leather loafers is to fill out the leather. You can do that either with the shoe trees or you can simply stuff them with plastic bags, newspaper, or recycled paper. You don't want to overstuff the shoe because you can actually stretch the leather out over time. But just create a good enough amount in there that the leather doesn't crease or sag. This will prevent your leather from creasing and cracking and enable it to last many more years than if you never filled it to begin with. Alright guys, this concludes our clean and restoration of the Salvatore Ferragamo Luxury Leather Loafers. We scrubbed them down with some ShoeMGK cleaner and conditioner, used our Tarago pigmented shoe cream, and gave it a nice shine with our horsehair brush. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this simple video and that it was helpful for your leather care journey. It's my goal to share the skills and tools that it takes to love all your leather. The concepts I've shared today go beyond just shoes, so feel free to restore your leather jackets, bags, and other leather similarly. If you guys benefited from this video, I'd greatly appreciate it if you would take a moment just to hit that like and subscribe button because it enables me to bring you more videos like this. Make sure you always love your leather, and I'll see you in the next video.